Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on reproduction, and in particular on meiosis. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello there and welcome to this tutorial on meiosis. So in the previous tutorial we had a look at sexual and asexual reproduction. And we also discussed mitosis in a little bit more detail. Um, but do bear in mind, there is a really in-depth mitosis tutorial um, amongst some of the videos. So do go back and have a look for that one if you're still a little bit unsure about mitosis. Because in the last tutorial, we just talked about mitosis in terms of asexual reproduction. So now we're going to have a look at meiosis in a little bit more detail. Um, so we will take a look at the definition of meiosis and then look at how it relates to fertilisation. And there's quite a few very specific specification points here, so use this as a checklist to come back to at the end of the tutorial. So first of all, in meiosis, the original cell divides twice, forming four daughter cells. Now, this always used to really confuse me. I didn't quite understand how if one cell divides twice, we get four cells. The best way of working it out is just to have a look at this diagram here. So this is our parent cell, or our original cell. Here, it's gone through interphase. You don't need to know the details of this, but all that means is that it's gone through a stage of the cell cycle in which its chromosomes have duplicated. And this is, so this is still the same original cell that we have here. It just has twice the number of chromosomes. It's then going to divide once. So this is division number one, which occurs here. Okay, so if it helps, I can just write division one and then we get division number two. So when I say the original cell divides twice this is exactly what I mean. Division number one, division number two, count the number of cells at the end because we get the original division that makes two cells. Each of these two cells then divide to form two more cells. We therefore get four daughter cells. So that's how I got my head around it. So only one set of chromosomes is given to each daughter cell, which means that the cell is haploid. So these cells formed are the gamete cells, as they contain only one set of chromosomes each. They will be genetically different from one another. So there's a few terms here that it might be a little bit tricky. So first of all, we're saying that the daughter cells are haploid. So we call cells haploid if they have nuclei that possess pairs of homologous chromosomes. Oh, sorry, we call cells diploid if they, are, if they have nuclei that possess pairs of homologous chromosomes. Whereas we call cells haploid if they have nuclei that possess only one set of chromosomes. So if they're diploid, we normally, so because they've got the pairs of homologous chromosomes, we, call a, we say a diploid cell is 2n, whereas a haploid cell is 1n, okay? And all that means, you don't have to learn this or anything, I'm just trying to explain the concept to you. All that means is that a diploid cell has double, no, double the number of chromosomes as a haploid cell, because the diploid cell contains pairs of homologous chromosomes, whereas the haploid cell just contains one set of chromosomes. So... Perhaps if you have a look at this diagram here, you can see it's diploid because it's got pairs of homologous chromosomes. Whereas here, then the chromosomes are not paired up anymore. The daughter cells are haploid, so they contain half the number of chromosomes. Okay? So diploid cells are present in most animals and many plants. Whereas haploid cells are what gamete cells are. So all gametes are haploid. And haploid cells are derived from diploid cells via meiosis. So meiosis is the process of forming these haploid cells. So let's have a look at meiosis in a little bit more detail. So as I said earlier, we have this, this 
um, section of the cell cycle which we call interphase, in which our homologous chromosomes duplicate. So you can see here that we will get we have our M we have M1, P1, M2, P2. So this is meant to symbolize chromosome one, this is meant to symbolize chromosome two. It's a diploid cell, therefore we get one chromosome, one from mummy, one from daddy, same here. Okay? Now in interface, we're going to get a duplication of each of these in the pair of homologous chromosomes. So M1 duplicates, P1 duplicates, M2 duplicates, P2 duplicates. And then we get division 1, so meiosis 1, which is division 1. Then we get division 2, meiosis 2, which is division 2. And so in the end, we end up with four daughter cells. These are our, are our daughter cells over here. And notice how they are all haploid. So I'm going to write N here because they are haploid. That's all I mean by N. OK, because remember on the last slide, I said that diploid cells, which would be this parent cell over here, undergo meiosis to form their haploid daughter cells. OK? So we have our parent cell undergoing two divisions. That's another really important point, so just make sure you remember that meiosis invo evo um, involves two divisions. And this then produces our daughter cells, which all contain a single set of chromosomes, whereas the parent cell has its pair of homologous chromosomes. OK? Now, as I said, meiosis produces four non-identical haploid daughter cells. So it's really important that you remember that meiosis produces non-identical daughter cells, whereas mitosis produces identical daughter cells. Then during fertilization, so we don't, when we make a new person, for example, we don't want them to have haploid cells. But if our gametes are fusing together, and they're both haploid, we're going to create a diploid cell because we're going to have in the egg, which is one of our gametes, that's haploid, so that's going to have N chromosomes. Sperm is another gamete cell, so that's also going to have N chromosomes. So when the egg and sperm fuse here, we're going to have N plus N, which is 2N, which is now your diploid cell, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we want. So Fertilisation is when the egg and sperm fuse, two haploid cells join to form one diploid cell. And in the final diploid cell, half the chromosomes come from the egg, which is from mum, and half from the sperm, which is from dad. So that's why we end up with our M1, P1, so maternal chromosome 1, paternal chromosome 2, M2 and P2, maternal chromosome 2, paternal chromosome 2, and so on through all the chromosome pairs. So gametes, as I said, have haploid um, sets of haploid number of chromosomes in their nuclei, which means that they have half of the original numbers of chromosomes. So this means that to form an embryo, the number of chromosomes has to double and be back to the original number, which requires two gametes to fuse together, which is where we saw the egg and the sperm coming together in the previous slide. So the sperm and egg cells are the human gametes. Each contains 23 chromosomes. So when they fuse together, how many chromosomes will, their, will the fused, will the fertilised cell, fertilised egg have? So pause the video at this point and try and work it out. OK, so I'm saying that the sperm and the egg, they are gametes. They each contain 23 chromosomes. They're going to fuse together. Therefore, you just do 23 plus 23 equals 46 chromosomes. So this is now our full diploid cell, which is exactly what we want, because these gametes were haploid, okay? Only contained 23 chromosomes, one set of chromosomes. Whereas these, the daughter, or not the daughter cells, but when they fuse together, um, the sperm and the egg, we create the diploid cell, okay? So this leads to diversity because the embryo will have characteristics from both the mother and the father, so from both the sperm and the egg cells. And this 
fused together sperm and egg is known as the zygote, a fertilised egg. Over time, the zygote turns into an embryo. But in order for do, to do this, it's got to produce more copies of itself. So just flash back to our mitosis tutorial. How do we make an exact copy of a cell? Well, it undergoes mitosis. So after the process of meiosis, the fusion of two gametes and the formation of the zygote, we're then going to have mitosis, which allows the embryo cells to divide and produce exact copies of themselves, genetically identical copies. And once the embryo is large enough, chemical signals then trigger the specialisation of cells by differentiation. Because not only when we make a little baby do we need the baby to grow in size, but also we need it to be able to form a brain and brain cells within that brain and a heart and heart cells within that heart and muscles and muscle cells within those muscles. So not only do we need its bulk to get bigger, but also we require specialisation of cells. And this is what we call differentiation. And examples of these chemical signals might include the sonic hedgehog signal. Really cool name, that's how I remember it. So a little tip here, just make sure to remember that human gametes have 23 chromosomes and that other human body cells have 46 chromosomes. Now that's because you just need to remember that human gametes are always going to be haploid, okay? Which means that they're going to have N chromosomes, which is half the number of normal cells. Normal cells are diploid. They're going to contain 2n. Now how do we get from a gamete cell to a normal cell? Well, you know this better than I do by now. We're going to have gametes fusing together, so the egg and the sperm fuse to form our diploid cell, okay? And this isn't the case in all animals, but human gametes have 23 chromosomes, so when we form our fused cell, it's gonna have 46. So all normal human body cells have 46 chromosomes. And rem remember that meiosis forms gametes, which are our sex cells, and mitosis forms other types of cells, so everything else, basically. So well done for today. These are your key points summarised. I'd go through this as a checklist and just make sure you understand everything. And I'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.